Good morning, everybody, and welcome to IGEL Weekly. This sunny October day, fall is in the air. Uh, welcome to episode 86. Um, last week, we inadvertently put out two episode 85s because both uh, Seb and I recorded an episode and so did uh, Andy and Chris. So I guess this is uh, 86 or 87, depending on how you want to do your math. Um, but welcome to the show. Seb, how are you, my man? I'm doing almost fine. Uh, yeah, it's just a typical Friday on my end. I break my device and not during a Niger firmware update. No, no, no. It's just my mainboard who just quitted uh, work. So it's just peeping until until always and it's just uh, doing nothing. So I just had a call with IT and apparently the mainboard is broke. So let's see what happens. So I'm lucky that I have enough Azure OS devices, which is uh, the one I'm using today to join our podcast. Um, but yeah, all the peripheral devices, all my DMOD equipment at the moment is just down. Not complaining. It's just a Friday. So well, your laptop won an early weekend, did it? Exactly. <laughs> so it just told me so much in the last weeks. And just today, coming back at home, it says, nope, I don't want to work anymore. A typical French laptop, right? Just cranky. <laughs> So I want to get into the wine and cheese, yeah? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just out of curiosity, is your daily machine, your daily driver, your daily laptop, is it IGEL OS or do you use Windows mostly or what do you use? That's a really good question. Um, my laptop is a kind of a Frankenstein device. Uh, so I have three different operating systems. I have Windows, I have Linux, Ubuntu in that case. And in addition to that, I have a UD Pocket, which is my major my major workstation. And I'm using this different operating system based on the use case, right? So if I'm traveling to a conference where I'm, they're using Baku, the small USB devices which you can connect to connect to a Beamer, to a projector. That's a typical use case where I'm using Windows. If I'm using just for working on scripting, I'm doing that mostly on Azure OS. And if I have to do some paperwork, writing documentation, it depends, mostly Azure OS and Ubuntu. Right. Okay. So you sound like a lot like me. So my kind of daily driver is Windows, but I do a metric ton of work in, in Linux for, you know, custom partitions for customers, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But also in IGEL OS, you know, you know, reconfiguring things, seeing how things work, uh, upgrade processes, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, exactly. um, and when I say Windows, um, you know, I have a Windows laptop, I have an IGEL laptop, uh, but I also do spend a pile of time in our, in our Citrix environment, in our VDI environment, um, because, uh, we got we got to drink the Kool Aid, right? As they say. So we got to, you know, if we're if we're selling it and we're we're, we're telling our customers about it, we better be using it ourselves. That's perfect. And uh, it makes my life easy too, because you know when I'm traveling, you know, I just connect to my virtual desktop. All my stuff is there. I don't have to worry about you know if my laptop gets stolen, my laptop gets exactly. bricked like you. My data is all in the cloud somewhere, and our IT department yeah. uh, looks after after all that for me, which is which is refreshing because once upon a time I was the IT department and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get I get your feeling exactly. Yeah. On my end, it's more the, all the different virtual machines, right? Because I, I don't want to run any virtual machine on the AVD desktop, which is quite obvious. Uh, we are working on AVD at the moment. So that's the reason why I'm saying, okay, for normal daily work, AVD is perfect because you make your screenshots, documentation there, everything was fine. But as soon as you hit the local, local level and you have to do some testing on Citrix, that's where the virtual machines are happening. Mostly, I mean, they're running it's also kind of a mix, right? So I have some working on the ESXi and all those who are working on the virtual box and Azure OS. So it's, again, a kind of a Frankenstein concept. Yeah. And that's one thing I do miss when I'm traveling is I don't have access to my virtual machines because my laptop, you know, it's, it's a fine yeah. laptop. It's a Lenovo X1. It's a pretty powerful machine, but I can't run oh. the three, four, five virtual machines that I need when I'm on the road. Uh, so I have be a careful. I, I have an X1 too, the oh. one who is bricked, just in case. And the warranty ended two days, uh, two days ago. So just in case, check your warranty and check your mainboard maybe again. <laughs> so you, hang on, your warranty ended two days ago, and today is Friday the thirteenth. Yes. yes. Oh, so my, mine's yes. a little newer. Mine was brand new when I joined Integra, <laughs> and I joined in January. So I think I have another two years left. Um, Definitely, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was, I was, I was, you know, th this is not IGEL related, but I was thinking about what, how do I, you know mobilize my my lab and um, i was looking at moving it to the cloud and moving it to you know this integra yeah. data center so there's a number of ways i'm thinking about skinning that particular cut but it's it's a work in progress because i do need access to this lab to do my you know my day-to-day -day job um so you know i'll put a pin in that for now and to figure out the best way to do that so if any of the listeners have an idea of you know the best way to have four or five virtual machines on a laptop that can only run uh, there's only a 16 gig machine let me know i'll be happy to hear it <laughs> 
come on, we are saying only 16 gigabyte of RAM. It's 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 incredible, right? I don't know. Ten years ago, 16 gigs of RAM would have been something enormous, and nowadays, 16 gigs of RAM is just average, right? See, now now we're talking like the old guys have, you know, you know, back yeah. in my day, blah blah blah, you know, old man yeah, screaming exactly. at the cloud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, because even again, kind of not really on topic. But I just built a new a new machine for my son. He's a bit of a gamer. He's only, he's only going to be twelve in uh, February, um, but he plays a lot of Minecraft and it's real Java heavy. And uh, mm-hmm. so his machine, you know, minimum kind of thirty two gigs and you know a big honking video card, and uh, that's really scary when you think about it. You know, all that power for for a twelve year old yeah. to to play with his friends, but uh, that's not really here or there. Um, let's change gears a little bit. Um, First thing I want to talk about is congratulations. Um, the community is now eleven thousand strong. That's a yes. that's a big big number. Yeah, it is. It is. And fun fact, it happened yesterday. That's not a fun fact, uh, but it's more or less exactly six months um, after we hit the ten thousand. So is it took right? us just half a year to raise about one thousand members. And I mean, we did a lot, right? René did a lot of social media and on his own channel and, and content. We did a lot of advertisements. We were traveling again. I was in Sweden last week. I was in Frankfurt this week for a partner event with Lenovo, by the way. Okay. Um, so. That's something which really warms my heart. I mean, we just got 1,000 members in that than half a year. And uh, I can't express how happy I'm, I'm about this because it was a huge growth, but it was an organic growth, right? So it was, we were expecting to hit that number, but I wasn't expecting to hit it that early in the year. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I mean, our community is changing too, right? I, I'm sure you, if you ask our insiders, they will have the same feeling. It's it's getting hard to get all the questions answered. And I know we have a great uh, group of folks there who are helping on a daily basis, even if it's not their job. And we have actually employees helping a lot, but it's getting more and more, right? And now we have 11,000 members and wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, off the top of your head, any idea how many messages have been posted? Are we in the hundreds of thousands of Messages? I can tell you that in details. Uh, bear with me a second because I just had all the reports refreshed this morning. So if you give me one second, I can give you that putting you on the spot uh, right away. Uh, the good thing is, I just I have still my cell phone in power led, so I can do some the mathematics. So on the number of messages, public messages. So year to date, sixty thousand messages. Okay. And from the beginning on, if you give me one second more, I will jump back to the main page where I should have the stat already. And refreshed. the beginning it was five years ago, is that right? Or more or than that now? Yeah, we will we will hit the sixth the sixth year at the moment. Okay. So, so when's the birthday party? When's the when's the cake? When's the when's the candles? Again, <laughs> uh, we have four hundred four hundred and thirty thousand public messages. So and direct messages combined. We need to have some kind of celebration or some kind of prize for whoever posts the five hundred thousandth message. I don't think it's something we should, you know, publicize to keep track. But let's uh, let's let's come up with a prize, a gift card, or a uni pocket, or, or something we can give to somebody. So, you know, like who, doesn't matter who it is. Yeah, whoever it posts the five hundred thousandth message gets a prize from you know. I can send some Zintegra, Zintegra t-shirts, some Zintegra swag. Let, let's That's do that. A good idea. Let me let, let me make. I'm pretty sure it would be Stu. But uh, <laughs> I will write it down. Great idea, yeah. I there like we it. go. Yes. Okay. So we'll have to keep track of where we are. So we just broke four hundred thousand. So yeah, with the growth of the community, that's probably going to. do. I bet you it'll happen sometime in May, June next year. The uh, twelve thousand to the next step, or the number of messages. You number of messages. Is my is my math right on that? Uh, well, I guess time will be- tell could be tough to be honest because if you think back um about the data that we had one year ago we were around 400 so let me check i mean it, it's growing right but all the time where we had messages posting just to answer the same question decreased a little bit uh, but i can right. i can give you a, a rough overview where we were at the 
begin of the year. I just have to go back into right. the reporting stuff. Th that's, by the way, a fun fact, right? Uh, all our community members and podcast listeners I know the community from the front end, from Slack, and what uh, funny things we're doing in Thalys. But you would be impressed how many data, how many reports, how many uh, workflows are working behind the scenes to make Slack working as you see it uh, nowadays. It's... Uh, it's a huge framework in the meantime. Yeah. Let me ask you uh, a question just while you're looking yeah, that up. Go ahead. Uh, maybe it was maybe it was a Doug decision, but I know you were involved very early on. Why why was Slack chosen as the platform versus your traditional kind of forum software or, or uh, Discord or whatever is the new flavor of the week this week? To be absolutely clear, I wasn't a part of that moment uh, of the community of the community team. So Doug chose it, and there was a reason. And I have to think back to be honest, because we had the discussion. I had the same question to him, and to be fair, there wasn't a lot of uh, of alternatives to that moment. Right. We were thinking of Teams, but it was not compatible to a wider audience and not working for the for the purpose we are looking for. Um, they had Discord on the list, but he cancelled it quite soon because it was messy to to organize. Right. And I have to rethink of what the, he had a, a third tool he was evaluating. Um, but I have to, to be honest, I would have to ask him. I well, maybe we get Doug I, I on for we we'll get Doug on for the sixth birthday oh, party yeah, podcast. Be a cool idea. And yeah, then I, 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 I will, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I will see him uh, in two weeks in Rome in the E2E, which is a virtual conference for engineer computing, and so we will meet in Rome uh, hopefully in a couple of uh, weeks. All right. So I will I, I will say the best of us. Yes. Okay. And tell him we want to talk to him for our sixth birthday. Bring, I will. bring back the grandfather of the Agile community. <laughs> I'm sure he won't like me calling oh, him I like grandfather. That <laughs> I mean, he turned 50, how many years ago? Three or four years, if I remember right. So he is yeah. already, he is, no, he is not a grandfather. No, that's not fair. Right. <laughs> so j just to give you an overview, uh, we had 370,000 messages at the beginning of the year. So we had about 60, yeah, I would say, yeah, July next year. July right. next next year could be, could be feasible. Circle on your calendars. Big, big things yep. coming. <laughs> so, with with the whole you know growth and success of the Azure community, you know it's really still at the end of the day around the product. And I saw this week there was a, in my opinion, one of the biggest releases since Cosmos is the version eleven point oh nine. Um, yeah. And the reason it's so big for me, I actually wrote my own blog post about it because I was kind of kind of excited. Like, oh, here we here we go here we go is because <laughs> excuse me, um, not just because of the you know the the vulnerability fixes the CVE fixes, but this is the version. That will allow us to upgrade from 11 to 12, and and that was a um, a roadblock I want to say for for a lot of customers that you know I'm not even going to look at Cosmos because there's no no real upgrade path just yet. Um, but as of what was it Wednesday, the path is there. Uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday. Oh but well, we have, we have so many uh, so many time zones between us. It could be that it was yesterday, <laughs> for, for two days ago for you. No, just kidding. No, no, it, it was yesterday. It was during the the official mailing came in during our evasion meetup that we had yesterday in the in the evening time. So for so, for me, that the assignment of the eleven oh nine release is the upgrade to twelve. Um, anything that stands out for you, or is that kind of the key feature that people should look for in this version? It is, and but I would say there is another one. I mean, let's stay on the uh, on the upgrade topic for a second. There were a couple of roadblockers where people didn't want to choose OS twelve as a production operating system. I mean, we are still working on mm -hmm. the topics I will address now. Um, but the major topic was being not able to upgrade productive devices without having to refresh them. Because what you could do in the past is to use the OSC or use a PXE, or you own a PXE appliance to refresh the device to go directly to OS 12. But let's stay honest, that's not really handy. And you have local configurations who then would have been lost. So it's not it's not the typical way to upgrade a device, to refresh it. Um, secondly, what is now still blocking a few projects, but I can tell our listeners we are working on it, is that some saying, hey, I don't want to upgrade to UMS 12, I don't want to upgrade to OS 12 because everything, uh, what happened in the web UMS, but I still have devices in the, in the Java console and we're in a feature parity. Yes, this is partially, not to say mostly correct, but please be patient because we are working on implementing in every UMS version, even more features from the UMS 6, so from the UMS Java console, so to say, into the UMS 12 web app. So you will have hopefully 
I would say until end of the year, maybe Q1 next year, a UMS web app, which should mostly replace what you have done in the UMS Java console over years. And that's, by the way, a topic that uh, we could maybe also talk about today is about this redesign of the web UMS, but let's stay on the, uh, on the Azure OS maybe for, for a second. You mentioned it at the beginning, uh, but I think it's worth to spend a couple of, uh, of seconds there. You can't believe how many CVEs we had to address between the original time frame and today. It's going crazy at the moment. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm just getting older and uh, it seems like it's getting more. And in the past, everything was bright and we didn't have so much CVEs. But it seems like at the moment it's quite massive. And that's the reason why we had to postpone that feature um, and this firmware for one week, if I remember right. Yeah, for one week. We had the 5th of October as an initial date. And we had to postpone it because we had some curl, we had some um, right. um, X11 vulnerabilities. Wow. It's incredible how much efforts we have to take to cover all the different CVs at the moment. And we have just a new ISN, by the way, published a couple of minutes ago. So it's not our own product. It comes from our partners. And not saying we don't have any, any issues, not saying that, but it's impressive how much things are happening on the, on the market. Right. And that, that kind of speaks to the point with, you know, all of the CVs that come out about, around, you know, various different products, libraries, blah, blah, blah. Um, with IGEL OS 12, where everything is pulled out of the core operating system, now you're only, IGEL is only kind of, you know, patching the, what do they call it? The base app. It's not even OS anymore. The yeah. base app, IGEL OS. And then we we look to our, when I say our, I mean your partners, like our mm -hmm. Citrix, our VMwares to, to, you know, patch their workspace app or Horizon client. Um, so yeah. the actual security posture of IGEL OS has, has greatly increased with the release of OS 12, simply because the attack surface is as minimized. You're 200% correct. And that's where we had the discussion during the trade fair I attended yesterday. Um, people were saying, hey, why should I move to OS, OS 12? And I said, well, are you dealing with private builds at the moment? They said, yes. And we have a lot of different versions because one is fixing that topic. The other one is fixing that security issues. I said, yes, but that's exactly the main use case. We are following an Azure OS 12. Not having to deal again with the whole monolithic part of the firmware where one firm is fixing one thing and the other something else, and you can combine them. No, that's exactly what OS Web is doing. We deliver you applications, configurations for specific parts of your use case, mm -hmm. and you can combine them as, as many times as you want. So that's where you have a lot of more flexibility in terms of security, but also in terms of, uh, of uh, applications. Just think about the Zoom VDI plugin. Just think about the WebEx VDI plugin. How many versions you have to align right. together with the Citrix Workspace app, the base OS, maybe also the Codex, even if it's not part of that one, but it's related maybe to what you're using for the um, uh, for the webcam redirection. So all the different components which are working together, we did that in the past. It was okay, but now we have really a flexibility which should help you as a customer or partner to make your life a little bit easier. But yeah, I just wanted to mention it because honestly, the CVE stuff is causing me a lot of headache at the moment. It's, uh, <laughs> at least on OS 11. You, you mentioned that there was new ISNs uh, released yesterday. Yeah. Um, for, the, for the listening community and, and uh, oh, for me yeah. as well, what does ISN stand for and what is it? Good point. Thank you for, for, for asking that. I just mentioned it without thinking that someone might not know it. It's the Azure security notifications. Not uh, So that's what our security team, we upgraded the security team a couple of months ago. So we have more people there. We are really watching actively and getting active information from our partners, vendors, but also from the market. And are checking, hey, are we concerned? Um, which impact does it have on our product? And this department works hand in hand with the technical publication, which is also part of the community team. And this technical publication are creating articles, which are then sent out of our social media, internally in Teams, but also on our SharePoint, uh, via our mailing, if you subscribe the uh, security notification from our newsletter list, or if you go to our agilecommunity.com and join our community, you are there more or less in real time or technical publication colleagues who are posting uh, these ISNs and how to remediate them if there is a remediation available. Okay. Um, for old school people like me, what about, is there something like a traditional RSS feed available of the ISNs? Not yet. But that's a really good point. We are we are thinking about how to deal with our agile.com website and the RSS feed is a hot topic there. So that's something that we might address in the future. Yes. 
Yeah, I know for, for for people like me who get hundreds and hundreds of emails per day, yeah. you know, an ISN email is probably not going to get a whole lot of attention. But if I can, right. you know, you know, feed it into my Outlook as an RSS feed, and it only updates when there's something important to look at, um, it might be worthwhile. So that, that's just kind of my two cents in the no, way no, I right. operate. And you you're know, right. I have a little more exposure to the community than the average bear, so I do see the notifications in there as well. But you know, yeah. for your for your average digital administrator who may or may not be a part of the community, um, different ways to to consume and digest these ISNs yeah. uh, would be well would be time well spent. I think you're definitely right. And there is just a small small piece which just yeah didn't get enough recognition because the OS or OS 11 to OS 12 upgrade path was integrated in the firmware and is just taking all the attention. But don't forget that this 1109 is also holding a new kernel version, and this new kernel version gives you a way more compatibility to newer CPU chipset and Wi-Fi chipsets. Um, thinking out loud about some Intel Wi-Fi AX chipsets which were not working on on Azure OS 11 or 8, well, give it a try on 11 or 9. There is a, not only a high chance; there is an extremely high probability that it will work now, and that also helped us to get a better hardware support together with our partners like Lenovo, LG, uh, but also Pepper and Fuchs to get devices supported now in that version and officially supported. So I was thinking we had the question on the Lenovo Trade Fair I attended, um, is the tiny P13 devices uh, being supported? I said yes from now on, since yesterday they are. And we have also discussion from with Zachary Soda, right? From CPC with the question yeah. PC docking station. Now even if it might have worked in the past, now we have the official support, which means that we have the drive integrated properly, we can we can uh, monitor all the actions. And I should say, finally, we have now a couple of USB-C docking stations working properly, and that helps a lot. Right. And it's also worth mentioning that with the new kernel comes um, potentially some regression testing, because if you have custom partitions yeah. out there, um, make sure you test those if they're going to work on the new yeah. kernel. Um, so it's, well, it is, a, you know, 1108 to 1109 is a jump. And it's, you know, historically, in, in IGEL world, they've been fairly seamless. But if you are running... Uh, custom partitions. Make sure you test those before you upgrade to 1109 because of uh, the new kernel. And and Seb, the new base is based on 2204. Is that right of Ubuntu? That's absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah. Finally. So if for any new custom partitions people are building as well, build them on 2204. Yep. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, we kind of touched on it a little bit um, last episode as well. You touched on it very briefly. This this episode is um, the UMS redesign. Um, so. Talk to us a bit about like more about that. Is is this going to be obviously a redesign of the web app? We're kind of abandoning the Java app because it is what it is, and it's going to go away. Fingers crossed in the next uh, twelve to eighteen months. Um, so, what's coming down the pipe in terms of uh, UMS web app redesign? First of all, you were kidding me, but I like this Java console. It's kind you know of, what? I I like it because gray, I know it, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's and, and it works. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but, but it's not pretty. That's, it's that. not pretty. Yeah, no, no, that's, def <laughs> that's definitely correct. And I'm always saying this a little bit like us Germans, right? It's great. It's functional. It's not really funny, but it works. So that's that's the way I'm seeing the Java console. But I must say, no, the web console is really what we are fo focusing since I would say three years now. And at the beginning, it was really just a web a web front end for support for service uh, employees. Now it's really turning to get the major configuration tool for deploying configurations and applications in OS 12. And from there, obviously also for OS 11. But coming back to your point, I can't tell you too much because most of these informations are not even on the NDA, but not even official. Mm -hmm. So I will try to, to, to make a story around it. Uh, the actual web UMS is good, but in my opinion, it's not what you would expect from a modern uh, software company. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking out uh, about all the tools that are having a web uh, web console, and you have context menus, you have different uh, animations, you can configure your, your, your uh, user experience, but also user interface to match um, thinking out about uh, your corporate identity to have different uh, theming. That's all the kind of thing that a typical and modern web front end should handle. And not saying 
or confirming officially that that's something that we're looking at for the new WebUMS, but there is a high chance and that's something that was definitely overdue. Um, even if, I must say that the um, context menu is already there from the last UMS version, but there we are really speaking about this typical uh, look and feel as you might know from your uh, ESXi web, uh, web console, where you just right click, you get a really a proper uh, context menu showing and you can go into submenus that's what we are looking at the moment, right? And even if you look at the web UMS structure, if you look at your devices, uh, so your trees, your devices, your configurations, it's good, but it seems like it, it, you're lacking just a small piece of something. Yeah, yeah. And this little piece of something is what we address in, or what we would address in the new version. And that's really, a, I'm not sure how a UX designer would call it, but in my opinion, it's a complete redesign of the web UMS. The story will stay the same, right? You will have from left to right your different areas, but I loved it. The first time I saw it, I just sent over kisses over Zoom to the, <laughs> to the dev guest showing it and the, and, the, and the PM guest, because for the first time I was thinking, okay, my Java console was gray, was not funny, but I would not miss it anymore. And right. that's really the first time I, I saw this. And you would have a lot of more uh, animations and that's something that we were lacking at the moment. So that's what you can expect. I, I can't give you any any rough time frame, but it's not in three years. It's something that might come definitely earlier. Okay. Yeah, I, I know when I, even today when I work in the, in the web console, I'm constantly right-clicking on stuff that just doesn't Thank work. <laughs> just, you know, old habits Thank die you. hard, right? So um, yeah. But, it, but some right click stuff does work, so you just got to know you know when and where. But hopefully, yeah. more of that context menus, like you mentioned, uh, come sooner rather than later to to help the uh, the old school administrators. You know, we love to we love our right clicks, especially if you think about your configurations. Right, um, you are. I mean, if you are a new customer who is listening to to our podcast, um, you might not really feel this. But if you're using the UMS for a couple of years, maybe. The first thing that if you have a profile, you make a right click, you say copy, paste it in another directory. Um, that's something that you could do as a configuration, but at the moment, not that intuitively. And that's something that will come with a new version. So just, I mean, not saying you will work as in the Java console, but you will have the ability to apply the same work procedures as you did on Java. Right. And it might be worth mentioning too, where you and I have had a lot of exposure to the old uh, Java console for a new yeah. administrator who only knows the web app um, it's 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 fine, you know. You can absolutely yeah. do what you need to do if you just just we learned it one way. Now we have to learn it another way. But for new administrators who learn it the new way, um, you know, it's absolutely uh, perfectly functional. You're correct. So absolutely correct. So looking forward to the for that uh, the new release of of uh, the web app in unknown time frame. But I'm going to say within six months. Yeah, nudge nudge, wink wink. <laughs> I will not confirm nor think something again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one, one thing I want to do, Seb, that we haven't historically done on the podcast is let's talk about um, upcoming community events. Um, so for people who, who are not part of the community and TISC, TISC, you should be part of the community. Um, what, what's a community event in terms, uh, you know, from a, from an IGEL perspective? Like, you know, what are they? Why, why do people care? Why should people attend? Great question. So what we are trying to do, besides being active in Slack and trying to help you on a daily basis, we're trying to find topics in the end user computing space, but also agile topics who might be interesting for you. Sometimes you, as a listener, as an agile committee member, are bringing that topic up. We have an upcoming meetup which came from an insider, a member of the year, which is Milan Potrock, uh, who said, hey, uh, we need more information. Exactly. <laughs> Great Canada. Um, and we said, okay, you need more information regarding hardware certification process. Um, then why not inviting our Azure Ready team to a meetup? The Azure Ready team, by the way, is a team who is taking care of our certification, partially of our alliances with vendors. And they are basically the, the team which is working day in, day out on how to get more devices in our Azure Ready ecosystem, but also other software. And that's the kind of stuff we're doing, right? So we have an one hour usually meetup based on Zoom. Uh, we have it as a webinar, we have it as a Zoom call. So you can just register on agile.com slash events. From there, you will have a list uh, of the upcoming events. I will give you a short overview about what we have. Uh, just have it in my mind. I don't have the list in, in front of me. Uh, but there you can register for, for the events and get then a Zoom link and you will get also reminders in the community that you have to join. 
we are trying to make it interactive. But mm -hmm. as every Zoom session since a couple of years, um, I would say we don't expect you to to jump in, to to scream or um, ask questions all the time. We know that we are all getting a little bit bored and and tired of, of joining the Zoom session. We are getting this. We are not doing it only for the lifetime, sorry, for the uh, live event, but we are recording the session and making them available on Agile Community YouTube channel as well as on our video website. That's the reason why, not coming back to your question, uh, Barry, we had a meetup yesterday in the, uh, in the evening time in our time, so five o'clock uh, mm -hmm. Central European summertime PM. Uh, with Vasion, Printer Logic, because we had so much questions regarding printers and how to configure printers in an entity like computing, uh, Agile OS, terminal server construct, uh, how to deal with printer drivers that we said, hey, um, that's crazy. Just invite them because they have a great solution and not everyone is knowing them. And so we are doing social media announcements around it. And yesterday we had the last meetup. We are trying to do that one time a month, um, depending on the uh, on, on the member of the on the uh, time of the year. Uh, sometimes more. So the next one, if I remember right, is uh, next two, no, in two weeks on the 26th of October, together with Rene and Kodia Knispel, which is a colleague in, from the internal process in Germany, who will give you a great deep dive in. Uh, Algebra OS 11 to OS 12 upgrade. Oh, okay. I guess Rudnit just published it yesterday or two days ago, so it's pretty fresh. Uh, please join out there because you will get even more details as what uh, Ivan um, and Rene recorded a couple of days ago. So that's an exceptional meetup, so to say, to cover exactly that specific use case. Then even if not confirmed to 100%, because we are still no, not still. We are waiting for confirmation from our Agile Ready team, but we will meet on the November the 9th mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, Agile Ready team. So that's where you will get insights about hopefully what will come in the future, which kind of pros, which kind of uh, certifications we are working on uh, in the next months, and that's what we are looking at the moment. Right, and it just to, you know, my two cents on on the whole uh, meetup. It's it's not just a like a, a marketing event. We have brought in. Well, I, say, I keep saying we, but IGEL have brought in um, some of the executive teams sure. for these meetups. Like um, when Jeb was still with the company, we've brought in. Uh, I want to say the CTO Mateus. I forget his last name. Said, Mateus, yeah, yes, we brought him, and he's done yeah. some some fantastic interactive sessions with the community on on where Ideal is going from a from a security perspective. Uh, why decisions have historically been made with the product, um, with a with a security view on it. Um, so you know the sessions are well worth attending, and um, you know like like you said, Seb, it's not uh, it's not. Uh, death by PowerPoint. It's, um, you know, obviously there's a few slides to get the conversation started, but then yeah. it's really open the doors and, you know, have the community ask, you know, uh, the powers that be for lack of a better word. And that's the real value in those community sessions from my perspective right. anyway. And you're right to say we, I mean, you are part of the community since the beginning more or less. So it's not we or you, it's just our community, which is delivering that content. And that's the reason why you can say our, definitely. Right. Well, that reminds me. I want to ask you something in Slack afterwards. You got to look up what what my community member number are, I am. I think it was forty nine, but I could be way wrong. But that's that's not here nor there. Um, Give me a second. It's an easy one. So while you're doing that, I think that's probably enough content for today. So um, I have to get mentally prepared for a, a big rugby game tomorrow. Um, Ireland is playing New Zealand. So um, ninety six. I was number ninety six. That's weak. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, uh, rugby, rugby game tomorrow? Yes, Ireland versus New Zealand. So, the uh, the boys ah. in green versus the All Blacks in the Rugby World yeah. Cup. And uh, I know Carl from the community is going to be watching that <laughs> at who knows what time sure. in his world. But uh, I am excited for that game, I tell you what. And for those of you who don't is know, I, I was born in... Thing? Well, I was born is and raised in Ireland, in right? Uh, not in Canada. Ah. Okay. But uh, that, I, I'm that Irish, so now. yeah. So it's yeah. oh, I can't wait. So I gotta get ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming but, from France, and for the moment, the French are not that bad, so I can't complain. French or the French team are excellent, but you obviously yeah, don't follow it, right? No, no, no. I'm just following the uh, the discourse, but I'm not watching the games themselves. No, uh, I'm okay. just looking at how, how the French team. I mean, as every French, you are supporting the French team, whatever comes. Uh, so that's the reason why I said, oh, the French team is winning. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's in France. So I thought you'd have a little more interest, but <laughs> yeah, never mind. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you you forgot just one one extremely important topic for today. What's that? Didn't you want to learn something in German? Oh, yes, I do. How do you say 
Um, go Ireland. No, hang on. Let me think of a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, rugby World Cup. How do you say that in French? Or in German, I mean. Uh, rugby Weltmeisterschaft. Oh, Weltmeisterschaft. I'm not even going to try right? that one. I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my, but my Chef is happy to be honest. Yeah, you lost me. <laughs> all good. I mean, Welt is world and Meisterschaft is Cup Marks. Meisterschaft? Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Pretty okay. close. Very good. Very okay. good. Yeah, because if I if I get to Germany for Disrupt next year, I'm going to have to learn all these things, right? That's correct. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not expecting you to talk a lot about rugby in Germany, but... Weltmeisterschaft could be interesting if we were speaking about soccer. Ah, yeah, I love soccer too. <laughs> anyway, Seb, um, I know we kind of went over time here because uh, you had some uh, some technical difficulties. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's wrap this podcast <laughs> up and uh, we'll call it an episode and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. That sounds good. Thank you very much, Barry. Have a great weekend and have fun tomorrow during the game. All the best yeah. for, uh, for your team. Thanks, Seb. Talk soon. Bye-bye.